Hey everyone, good morning. Day 151 of uh, spiritual health care and I hope you guys uh, can join me today because we have some huge news um, coming up and I'm excited about all of this. Hopefully you won't lynch me. Um, but <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that this is going to be a, a really, really good day and um, I've got some, some, as I say, some pretty big, pretty big announcements in the works. So good morning to everyone. Um, it is good to see everyone. Uh, it's a big news today. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about this. Good morning to Ed. Morning everyone that's logging in. Uh, it's good to see everyone. Um, I hope your weather is treating you better than ours is. <laughs> We're like 106 degrees and it's ridiculous. Good morning, Laura. Hey. Um, good morning, everyone. This is uh, this is a, a momentous day because I've got some some huge news and um, it's good news. It is, it will be good news, I promise. Um, yeah. So as I say, I hope your weather is treating you better than ours is. We are we are so hot here in in both BC and Alberta right now. We're under what they call a heat dome, and it's insane. Like this thing is. <laughs> It's kicking our asses so hard. Uh, apparently it breaks on Friday and then we get to send it to Ontario. So <laughs> it can go to Ontario. I'll see you later. Uh, good morning, Sally and Linda. Nice to see you guys. Hey, uh, good news coming today. Good news. I, I'm telling you, it's uh, this is this is going to be super great. Uh, I've also got some fantastic questions today that we're going to answer. Um, talking about investigations, trauma, and what I think is going to lead to a conversation about vulnerable narcissists. Um, so I think that's going to be of interest to everybody. It's all stuff we can take away because this is stuff I've learned over the last little while, which is really good. Good morning, Wes. Uh, Sally says, oh, 82, 82 in, in, oh, that's not bad. You're 82 right now. That's, that's okay. We're, we're not, we're, I say we're like 106 Fahrenheit, which is like in the forties in, uh, uh, Celsius. And uh, it's is roasting. We've everybody has been huddled around their air conditioner, and basically everybody has you know kicked their partner to the curb and gone and had a relationship with their air conditioner. Is basically what's happened. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's really hot. Um, so everybody said to be really careful. Even Galen is too hot. Here he is, a Python, and his his species specifically is is African, uh, Central African, and uh, he is too hot. <laughs> He is, he is too. I've been like, hey, he's been in the bathtub. He's been, it's, it's crazy. Uh, Linda says she was 104 in California a few weeks. Yeah, it, it's seriously, it's it's really crazy how how the temperature has just skyrocketed. And as I say, we're under this 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 uh, uh, meteorological phenomenon called the, a heat dome. And apparently that's what that's what this is. So and apparently it's rare, thank God. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine with that. It can be as rare as it wants. It's It's nuts. Um, so as I say, we got some great questions today. First, I've got some huge news, and I'm gonna I'll, I'll tell you guys shortly, and I will also um, I'm gonna wait for a few more people to get here, um, and so I can I can explain the the news because I think you guys are gonna be actually really excited about this. Um, so good morning to everybody logging in, and uh, it's it's good to see you. There is there's some some really cool progress that is it is coming our way in general, everybody here, everybody. Um, and I, I think it's a, it's really, really good. So um, I'm gonna, I'm wondering if I should, I'm gonna start out with a quick question that was asked first. Um, and then I'm gonna tell you guys the news because if, uh, then it like, gives people a chance to get here and to log in and stuff like that. Morning Kaz, nice to see you. Um, so I'm going to answer this quick question and then I'm going to tell you guys the big news and then we can answer the bigger question because it's all about, let's say, narcissists and mental illness and I think it's, it's, I think it's something everybody can make use of. Um, but the first question was actually from Joey that got, got emailed to me and they were asking, have you ever used dowsing rods in paranormal investigations? Um, I found them to be effective. I've also used a Frank's box or spirit box with good results. So I'm going to answer this really quickly. I know I've touched on this a couple of times before in spiritual healthcare. Um, I'm not a fan of any of these methods because they are they are not there. There is nothing that is going to substantiate any of these methodologies if you do get something that's really positive or or seems to be seems to be legitimately paranormal. Um, most of these work on the principle of just 
kind of chance, like everything is, um, you know, our, bra our brain kind of starts to make associations with words, um, making them make sense with the conversations and things like that. So I'm not a fan of, of spirit boxes. I'm not a fan of Frank's box. I uh, never have been. Um, but the, the, the dowsing rods is, is very interesting because I think most people misperceive what the dowsing rods do. Um, I'll, I've heard a lot of people have dowsing rods and, you know, they're, they're, they're going along with them and believing that there is some sort of external force that is guiding the dowsing rods. For those of you guys who just got here, by the way, um, I, I have some huge news today. Um, and after I answer this question here quickly, um, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys the, 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 the news, uh, and whatever, but I thought I'd, I'd answer this question in order for everybody to kind of get here. Um, so, so dowsing rods, for those of you guys who have not heard of them, they're basically what they, they're basically, some people use coat hangers, some people use um, sticks. You know, of course, the original, the original method was to use sticks. And you're holding them out in front of you like this. And they kind of stick out like, like that. And they are said to cross whenever you hit on something that is legit, whether it be a, a ley line or water. Usually they were used for water, water dowsing, um, finding water underground. Um, but it's said that, you know, this external force is what is actually making these rods cross, which actually isn't true. What it is, is actually our own nervous system picking up on tiny little minute movements in our fingers. And what they've discovered and what they, what they believe is happening is that our intuition is so good that we can pick up on this stuff and we know when we're standing on water, we know when something's going on that there's a hit or that we're finding an object or whatever, that we're kind of tapping into our own ability to do this. And our sympathetic nervous system is actually playing havoc with the rods and causing them to, to turn. So um, it's not a car horn, sorry guys. Um, so it's not actually something that's external, it's something that's internal. And what I love about dowsing rods is the fact that they really get us to plug in to what's going on in our environment. So we have, oh, I had a class a number of years ago where I would actually give dowsing rods to my audience and I would have them walk this, uh, this meditation labyrinth that was used for Tai Chi. And I told them they could only turn when the dowsing rods turned. They couldn't turn on their own. They had to follow the rods. And what was interesting was that as they would go around the circle, they would follow the rods and lo and behold, the rods would turn and they would complete the, the labyrinth. It was really interesting. And we had kids that would actually hold the dowsing rods backwards and be able to walk the whole maze backwards without looking and just rely on the dowsing rods. But it was all of them tuning into themselves and the, that, that ability to, to reason and their ability to pick up on, on just external stuff. It was, it was really, really cool, but it was all coming from them. So I just wanted to, I wanted to cover that question because I, I thought it was really good and there was some information in there. Um, so, okay, here we go. Here's the big, here's the, here's the news. So today, and don't lynch me, uh, <laughs> today is the last episode of spiritual healthcare as it is right now. Okay. As it is right now. And the reason why is because I'm going to be moving this platform into podcast format with a good friend of mine, Mike Brown, who you guys are probably familiar with um, in relation to the podcast Dark Poutine, which is a true crime prod podcast, really, really popular. Um, and it's, so Mike Brown and I are going to be creating a, a brand new podcast in relation to some of the stuff we're talking about on spiritual health care. We're going to be talking about a lot of uh, true crime paranormal. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of cases that are usually off people's radar or they don't actually get the, the nitty gritty stuff underneath of it. Um, so it's going to be amazing. Um, so what I want to be able to do is take this platform and move it into something that is brand new for all of you guys. Um, that's going to be really fun. It's going to be really exciting. Um, we're in the process right now of getting sort of pre-production together and, and doing some writing. Um, once the title is, is solidified, I'll be announcing the, the title. Uh, for you guys so that you can follow it 
It'll probably, it'll be on all the major podcast uh, uh, formats. Would it be, I, I don't know which ones yet, but we'll, we'll figure that out. I'll announce them as it comes up. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know. So even though that this is the last episode of Spiritual Healthcare, um, it is evolving into this, this really amazing podcast. And it's going to be like, I think it's going to be amazing. Um, for those of you guys who are not familiar with, with Dark Poutine, uh, and Mike Brown, I highly recommend check his, checking his stuff out. He is super pro. Um, I've done his show a number of times. Um, I actually just finished doing his show this past weekend, uh, talking about the Amityville horror. Uh, and we were talking about the, the, the crime behind the Amityville and how the paranormal stuff got started and, uh, and all of that kind of thing. So it's, it's a great podcast. Um, and to say, it's not a, uh, it's not just done on a whim. There's a lot of thought put behind a lot of this. And there was a lot of put thought put behind this transition as well. Um, because so I, I, I love I love doing this uh, with, with everybody every week. And I want to make sure that all of what we're doing is continuing and moving forward. Uh, and I think podcast is probably the, the best way to do that. And, uh, and to bring in some more content too. Right? It's going to allow us to bring in guests. It's going to allow us to, to talk to people um, that normally we wouldn't be able to. Um, you know, you guys can, can still send in uh, uh, questions and things like that. And um, what I would encourage you guys to do as well is as we're kind of building this, this new podcast and we're, we're putting this together because as I say, we're in pre-production and writing right now, um, is if you guys have a topic if you guys have a, a case that has always really interested you, um, that kind of has that, that crime element or, or something going on like that, um, please send it because we are constructing the first season of this podcast right now. Um, and I want to hear from you guys as to what you want to listen to. So please, 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 if you guys have cases that have fascinated you or, or weird things that have, have popped up. And it doesn't have to be hauntings. It can be li literally anything paranormal. The one uh, topic that I, I want to cover at some point is the, the cover up the, in uh, uh, Russia of the Dyatlov Pass, um, which I, I just wrote about for Haunted Magazine here this past month. Um, so stuff like that, right? So stuff like that that's just got a weird element to it. Um, it'll, it'll be really, really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know what? It's all going to be audio. It's all going to be audio. So yeah. So I don't even have to worry about that. <laughs> it's all going to be audio. I'm like, I'm going to put a blanket behind myself because I'm literally sweating like crazy. It is, it is, it is literally 40 some odd degrees in Edmonton. It's just crazy. There we go. Now I won't stick to the chair. So anyway, so that is the big news. And I will be letting you guys in on this as this rolls ahead. Um, because there's, there's going to be tons of, there's going to be tons of, uh, of new information coming out. Um, and I'll be, we'll probably announce the title in the next, uh, I don't know, probably the next week here, um, and, and get that rolling. And I'm expecting that we're going to be, be recording this stuff within, within the month, within the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll start our first, our first podcast, start to write. Our plan is, is we're going to write the first season. Um, and then release them kind of as we, as we go along and it's going to be, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. So thank you guys for being excited about this and not lynching me for this being the last spiritual healthcare episode, <laughs> but it is good. It is good. It's the, the, the news is actually, it's, it's really exciting and it's, it's really cool. So, um, so I wanted to get into a question that Dan had sent a little while ago. Um, and because I think this question is is so good and I don't want to get into details about it because it's a, an active case. Um, but I think there's some really great points in here that I want to, I want to bring out and talk about. Um, and that I think you guys are, are going to benefit from because I've run into this type of thing before. Um, and, um, it's, it was a, it was a learning curve. It was a learning curve. Um, so, Basically, Dan's question in a, in a nutshell is when you have somebody who is obsessed with the paranormal, and I mean like obsessed, 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 unhealthily obsessed with the paranormal, 
who is believing that there is, or is, and is trying to tell you that there is something in the house when there is absolutely zero evidence that there is something in the house. But the person is super obsessed with, with, with the paranormal, what's going on, almost wants there to be something there when there isn't. How do you deal with a case like this? Um, and in his case, he actually, the, the person who was describing what looks like some, an, some internet lore, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of this before. I had to actually look this up because I had not heard of this before. Um, so there is a, a, an internet sensation character that goes around that named Siren Head. Uh, and so it's super creepy. It looks like it's something out of Silent Hill. Um, which is basically this sort of like tall, gangly, emaciated creature, which has a head that kind of looks like one of those old, like military based sirens. Like it's, it's very weird. And it makes, it's supposed to like walk through the woods and make these like eerie noises and stuff like that. Like really, really, really creepy. Um, so anyway, it's kind of like Slenderman, kind of developed like Slenderman where it was an internet creation and then it kind of gained its own fandom. And so anyway, in this, in this particular case that he's dealing with, the, the, the imagery that this guy is kind of putting forward is very similar to Siren Head. Um, and it, is, it doesn't seem to be based in any sort of reality that we would consider evidence of the paranormal. Um, so here's the, here's the thing what I've found with, with people like this, which, I, which you have to be kind of careful of. When most people think of things like narcissism, they think of this sort of grandiose, you know, I'm better than everybody else. I'm going to take advantage of people, um, you know, just people who are, are kind of outwardly obnoxious. They're manipulative. They're, they're, they can be mean, like they'll flip on a dime. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're insecure, but they're insecure in a way that they'll, they come out and try to, you know, ruin everybody else. They have to be the center of whatever's going on or they wreck it. Um, you know, we all, we've all experienced some form of narcissism and of course it's a continuum, right? With like malignant narcissism being a whole other ball game. Um, so there's another type of mar narcissism, which is interesting and it's called vulnerable narcissism. And I had to learn about this because I actually had a friend who was one and I had no idea. Um, and I had to completely re-educate myself about narcissists. Um, and vulnerable narcissists will come into a game with a, almost like a kindness. Um, they tend to be either claiming that there's something wrong with them, claiming there's something wrong with the environment, being um, sometimes they're obsessively sick. No matter what solution you offer them, there's always something wrong. Um... There's, oh, I gotta, hold on. There's magpies outside and they're really annoying. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. They're like screaming on my deck right now. Um, so what I noticed with, with vulnerable narcissism is that they, they, they come off as, as the victim. Like they purposely come off as a victim and they will perpetuate a problem. The problem, part of the problem with, with vulnerable narcissists is that sometimes there is a, a kernel of truth to the issue. So they will come to the table, for example, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so sick, I don't know what's wrong with me. We'll use this as an example. I'm so sick, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, you know, I've, I feel like I've tried everything. And, you know, you say, okay, well, you start offering solutions because that's you know what you you want to do you want to help these people right you want to help them move forward because they seem like they're really stuck and they will start to put up excuses at every possible turn that that the the solutions that you've proposed are simply wrong they're just wrong they won't work and they always have an explanation as to why they won't work every single time and they, you'll go through, and this is what I went through for the longest time, where I would go through like a three hour conversation with this person and they would go on and on and on about the issues. We'd solve the issues and the next day they would be calling back with the exact same issue and it was like the conversation prior just never even happened. Um, they, it's like 
they are fighting for their limitation, like completely fighting for their limitation. And oftentimes this stuff starts and stems from past trauma. Um, they've learned that they can get or gain attention or um, some sort of payoff from whatever they've got going on, even though it seems like it is completely of detriment to them. They will call and complain to death about what is happening. So how does this relate to the paranormal? Let me tell you, it does. Um, I've had a number of clients, not many, because usually I spot them quickly. Uh, I just didn't have a name for it at the time where they would come to me and they would say, okay, you, you know, this is what's going on. We're having a terrible time in our house. We don't know what to do. You know, oh my God, we need some help. And you step in and you start to bring them the solution and automatically the solution's not working. It's, you know, it's wrong. Um, you know, if you start to disprove some of the things that they believe are paranormal going on in the house, they automatically will turn around and say, you know, oh no, no, that's, you know, that's, that's not what it is, or you don't believe me. That's another big one. Um, and when you try to challenge the identity or the, the concepts that these people are, um, are, uh, are, are, are trying to explain to you, um, and are trying to come up with, um, as soon as you challenge that, you are in a world to hurt. Let me tell you, they will lose their mind, lose their mind. And immediately they come back with, you don't believe me. You know, how could you do this to me? You know, no one listens to me. Um, you know, in the case of medical issues, it's usually, you know, the doctors don't believe me. Um, you know, I know there's something wrong with me. Um, in, in the paranormal cases, it's, I know my house is haunted. You know, you just don't know what you're doing. Um, you know, I know this is there, so on and so forth. But the problem is, and the reason why they get so upset and the reason why they get so angry is the fact that they have made this concept, whatever it is, a part of them. So you are challenging an identity because as we know, most narcissists do, they, they don't have a sense of self. They just don't have a self. They, they're constantly changing masks all the time. So no matter what you see with a narcissist, you're always, you're never seeing the person because there is, there's nothing in there. They, they, they just don't have anything in there. They're constantly changing masks. So the person that you get is not the person that your neighbor's going to get. It's not the person that their parents are going to get every single time. It's a different human being. And often, you know, when you, you'll talk to neighbors or whatever, you'll start to see that there's, you know, everybody has a different story about who these people are. And that's why with a vulnerable narcissist, it becomes a little trickier because the the illness or the problem, whatever the problem is that they have deemed a problem, um, has become something that they are so attached to, they don't know who they are without the problem. So when you turn around and tell them, okay, you are this, that, or the other thing, you, you know, you, you need to do this to fix it or that to fix it, you're basically telling them you need to give up who you are and it's, it's a, it's a huge, huge challenge in their, in their mind. You're now, conf you're now, you know, not living in the fantasy world that they're creating around, whether it be an illness or whether it be a, whatever, uh, a haunting or whatever it is. Um, so I've had a couple of cases very, very similar to this where they are really determined to make their place the most haunted place or whatever. And what was interesting about one of the cases that I dealt with, uh, my friend Matt and I and some other team members, we were at a, a home um, just west of, of Edmonton and it was actually a daycare. Uh, they were using their basement as a daycare at the time. And the husband, they, they had called us saying, you know, our son, who was, he was probably about three, I guess at the time, um, was getting attacked by this this entity that that was in the the basement area who and this the kid's room was right off the basement um, and they were having weird stuff going on there was clearly there was actually something going on in the house and when we were there we recorded quite a number of, of paranormal events and uh, and whatever and we, we put them immediately through our program teaching the living and to get things righted again. And about, uh, it was a, about a week or so later, maybe two weeks, we got a call back and they said, yep, nothing's working. doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, we, you know, it, it, you guys don't know what you're doing, whatever. 
So we came back and we sat there as the husband was telling us how nothing worked, nothing worked, nothing worked. And his wife was sitting there like this, looking at him, looking like there was about to be daggers shooting out of her eyes, like somebody was going to get hung, drawn, and quartered. And immediately she said to him, why don't you tell them what you've been doing? And of course, we're all thinking, you know, what, what is going on here? And long story short, it turned out that what he was doing was basically every possible thing that he shouldn't have been doing that we told him not to do. Um, everything from going downstairs to, to, uh, try to poke the bear, essentially conduct EPP, um, just poke the bear, give it attention and whatever. And then he would end up leaving his son in the room at night. And by the time, after he riled this thing up. And so the son would get attacked and, you know, he would call somebody and say, oh my God, we're, you know, oh my God, our house is haunted. Um, really twisted. So we put them back on the plan again and we said, look, like you have to take this seriously because this is, this is really bad. They shut the daycare down. Everything was, every, they closed everything down. They got their son out of the basement. It's ridiculous. But anyway, long story short, he went right back to doing the same thing again and called us back again and then turned it around and said that what we were doing wasn't helping. And his wife ended up picking up the kid and divorcing him. He, she left and said, never again, we're not doing this. And she did the right thing. She was protecting her son. Um, but it was, it was a really interesting example of, of these people that kind of, they cling to a story. And, you know, and, and it's usually because, as I say, they, they found that it, there is a payoff of, of something. So when you get into these cases, you kind of have to ask yourself, what is that person's payoff? And because everybody does things in their life because it pays off for them on some level even the things that are not working they do because it's paying off on some level um and in these cases it usually usually centers around some uh some level of attention it usually uh centers around some level of a need for an identity uh, or something like that but the problem is is that when you're dealing with people like this there is no solution there really is no solution. And the only thing that you can really do at the end of the day is walk. Um, it's really, it, it is difficult because it feels like, you know, with, with the normal healthy brain, um, you know, well, the solution is so easy. You just have to not do these things or you just have to do, you know, X, Y, Z, but they will do everything in their power to not do what it is that will fix the problem because they need the problem for whatever reason. And they will suck as many people, and this is where it gets dangerous for people like us, they will suck as many people into that hole as they can to keep that story and narrative going. So when you end up in there with them, when you get involved in that conversation, what tends to happen is that you end up into that narrative as well. And you know, you just say, you think to yourself, well, I just have to repeat it again, or I just have to get them to set boundaries, or I just have to get them to do this, that, or the other thing. But that's not their intention. Their intention is not to fix it. Their intention is to, it's is to keep the, the narrative going. And the more people that are involved in the narrative, the more real it is for them, right? So if you've got somebody who's saying, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so ill, I'm so ill, I'm so ill, and the tests keep coming back saying that they're not, they're going to they're they're going to leave that situation because for us it would be really really good news right like you you want to hear the fact that your house isn't isn't you know haunted by a horrible entity you want to hear the fact that you know this is something that's easily fixable or you know you take a pill and maybe you know get rid of a symptom or something like that when in like the case of a vulnerable narcissist that's the last thing on the planet that these people want. They don't want the solution because that's, that's like the end of, of this, this identity that they've got going. Um, when I was, uh, when I was still friends with this, this person, what was interesting was that she was told at one point, um, that she was not sick. She had gone to a specialist, one of the best specialists here in Alberta. And she came over bawling her eyes out and bawling, like just, so deeply upset like you'd swear to god her family got slaughtered um she was so upset and i couldn't figure out what was going on 
until she finally spat out the fact that the doctor told her she was okay. And I kept waiting for the next piece. I kept waiting for, and more? <laughs> and more, I thought, I thought there's gonna be some horrible diagnosis after this. You know, so you're bracing yourself, right, for this next diagnosis. But it, at the end of the day, no, that was the problem. He had told her there was nothing wrong with her. And he had, he had referred her to, to an, another specialist just to confirm and to make sure that everything was okay. And she never went. She never went. And she never went back to get a second opinion. Nothing. And she the and what was interesting was that about a week later, she went right back to the same narrative about the illness that she that she had been talking about prior to that. Um, it was very intriguing to watch. But their the narrative in their head, they will rewrite everything. And with with haunting cases like this, same thing. Same thing. Um, no, you know, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, they're going to come up with a reason. And um, the the obsessions, the you know, all you can really do is to turn around and and let it go and leave them to their own devices. As much as that seems very juxtaposed to you know what it is we do as investigators, um, you you got to you got to take a step out because they're. They are going, they're trying to make you confirm their narrative, their fantasy world. And you can't, you, you can't do that. Um, it's not serving them. It's, it's just, you're not serving them. You're not serving yourself. You're just going to rip your hair out. Um, and, and they are going to, they're going to waste your time and, and be prepared when you, when you turn around and tell them that <laughs> this isn't real, you're, you're going to end up with, with a, with a basket case, um, and whatever, and they're going to hate you and they're going to, you know, do whatever, but um, yeah, vulnerable narcissism. That would be that. That is my uh, my answer to your question, and that and I could be completely wrong. I don't know this person. I'm just going based on the email that that was sent. But um, yeah, it was. It's it's interesting. So if you have one of these people in your experience, <laughs> and Kaz is saying he does. Yeah, you do. Um, I you. Know, it's funny because if you've got one of these people in your experience, you'll know immediately. Um, and you're probably all sitting back thinking right now, who, you know, who, who could that possibly be in my life? Cause usually we all have at least one. Um, yeah, don't engage it. Don't engage it. It'll, it'll drive you insane. And they are a never ending bucket of needing something, needing like solutions, needing whatever. And they don't actually want the solutions. They, they just want you to confirm they have a problem. That's, that's what they're looking for. Confirm I have a problem. So anyway um that's what that is <laughs> so i wanted to before we go today i wanted to read um a really great excerpt from faith in the valley because i think it is the perfect one for the last episode of spiritual health care um and i wanted to leave you guys with this because i think it's 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 pretty pretty cool so check this out take a moment to step back and watch the sunrise or set. If you can still, if you can be still long enough to observe the process, you will realize it is the earth, not the sun, that's moving. What a wonderful revelation. The world is in a constant state of motion. Some things are moving, changing, turning, dying, and being born, while others are constant. Once you realize this, you will know that number one, wherever you were yesterday, you are not today. And two, wherever you are today will not be where you are tomorrow. Whatever you know today will look different than it did yesterday. And what you don't know today, you will know tomorrow. After all, the world is in the process of being made, and so are you. Be still. Watch the process. Learn from what you see. Practice what you know. And then watch how it all changes. So before we go, guys, let's do some affirmations before before we go and as i say we've got uh the next phase of this ahead of us so everybody take a breath shake it out i'm a channel of peace and well-being and my need for peace is abundantly met i unconditionally accept love and appreciate myself and who i am i recognize and i'm grateful for the abundance that is constantly flowing into my life, which I can choose to allow or not. I feel with every breath a sense of peace and love. 
I help others by maintaining and tending to my connection with source as much as possible. This well-being is accessible to me, even in a sea of uncertainty. And at this moment, all is well. I'm able to liberate myself from my past and live with peace and serenity. I can see and appreciate all the beauty and abundance of the life around me. I'm able to embrace love while letting go of fear. And I find peace with the soothing silence of my inner being. Everybody breathe. And shake it out. Shake it out, everyone. Shake it out. <laughs> shake it out. So thank you guys for 151. 151 episodes of spiritual healthcare is pretty amazing. And um, as I say, the new information for the podcast, which is this is going to turn into, um, will be out uh, in the coming weeks here. And I will be posting it on the Entity Seeker Facebook page. Um, we're going to get this party rolling. And uh, Marge, thank you so much. I, I, I so appreciate you guys for every single thing that we've done together that we we've that we've worked through that we've <laughs> it's it's good and it doesn't end here it doesn't end here it's gonna it's as i say it branches into this this brand new podcast um where everything is is just going to continue and expand because this is about expansion and it's about um uh moving forward and creating something amazing so here we go <laughs> the next story. So all the past classes will still be on EntitySeeker.ca as well as uh, YouTube.com slash EntitySeeker. Um, and the new address for the podcast that you guys will be able to come and participate in and listen to and whatever, I will have that up and make sure everybody's got access to it. It will be free, of course, um, just like spiritual health care is and was. And um, we're moving into this next phase together. Um, so that we can keep this going with a, a bigger audience, broader audience, and cover some more stuff. So this is this is going to be incredible. It's going to be incredible. So thank all of you. Thank you. And remember, please send me topics, cases, everything, what, what you guys want to hear on this show, um, because we're in the writing phase right now. We're starting to write right now. So send me an email, entityseeker at gmail.com. And, uh, and, or, you know, message me or whatever. And, um, and, uh, let's get this party started. You guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give your guys a whole round of applause. Give your guys a huge round of applause for everything because there's none of this, none of this would have been possible without all of you. None of it. So you guys are, have what made this incredible. You guys, it, that's it. That's, it's all, it's all, it's all you guys. So, um, Let's start this off together again. So here we go. <laughs> Bye, everybody.